Hello. I spent the day today routing a No Major Glitches speedrun for Security Breach on stream. Which will probably be my favorite category, because you get to play the whole game and it has a ton of potential. Except when you get soft locked because the game won't give you head so you can smash Roxy's head in with your Mario Kart. <laughs> God's sake. Walloped. <laughs> I just finished the day with a 130 no major glitches run, and I love seeing little sections of the game I'd never seen before. Now I'm gonna spend the night reading your lovely comments and make a video. Let's do this. Okay, so I made a pretty big mistake last video. Uh, yes, yes, yeah, I, I know, yeah, I, I'm aware, yes, thank you, I saw the first, yeah, thank you, I appreciate, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you told me, okay, I'm sorry, uh, it turns out I was unaware that Sundrop's room wouldn't properly load unless I was there, you can get in Sundrop's room. Thank you pretty much everyone who gently informed me of my error and corrected me. Here is Sundrop's room. It's actually pretty cool. Once it's all loaded in. It's actually pretty sick. I don't know everything about this game. I, I'm going to make mistakes. And I appreciate people letting me know. My fun day. Me. <laughs> this big fuck off cake. Man, Sundrop really is MVP. What a guy. A handful of people actually wanted to see what Sundrop looks like when he turns into Moon Man. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. It's past your bedtime. You must be punished. Like some other people suggested, there are both models involved, but it's interesting. Unfortunately, Sundrop doesn't magically mangle into Moon Man. You can see Moon Man's model just underneath, and Sundrop's model never disappears after falling. Instead, Moondrop just rises up, and then is whisked off into the sky. Roxy's Raceway, I feel like, is a super unappreciated and unused part of the game, because if you play the game just to finish it, you'll only really come here for the dance pass and for the robot head. And then of course, of course, to come back and dome Roxy, but that's about it. You never really get to see the track. I love how there's just three outhouses mid-track in case you gotta take a shit stop. Am I right? hey -oh. It would seem Chica's Cakes gets so much business that they need to open two locations in the exact same spot. I didn't notice this until just now, but if you have the gun out, there's no animation for Gregory holding it, so it's just floating in front of your face, and I imagine the camera is just the same. That makes sense, I mean, at least Gregory's got a cool model. This has got to be one of the weirdest parts of the game. You see it once you kill Roxy and take her eyes. She chases you through here, but it's like, what? Why is this area randomly on fire? Why are they burning? Foxy? Why doesn't the fire spread? What is going on here? At first I thought it was maybe like a one big grill. Like that was that was the room, but I mean there's no indication of that underneath. I guess they just wanted to make something epic and just thought we'd forget that there's a room that's on fire, I guess. Is there anything in the water tower? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's a cool overhead view of the track. It is pretty sick. Okay, but you know what really irks me? This garage door? is constantly opened by this bot. You, you notice it while you're playing the game. You're like, oh my god, a garage door is opening. But it's just this idiot going in circles. God. Ah. Oh. 
There's our boy, the big man himself. Where does he go? There he is. What happens when he goes through the tunnel? Kind of squishes up and disappears. And then reappears where he's supposed to end up. I was really looking forward to this one. Here's the big man. Himself. Trying to get all up in your grill while you're in the bathroom. Why don't we take a look inside of Buddy's model? Nice teeth, bro. Look at this guy. He's got a disco ball for a mouth. And once he's done jump scaring you in the bathroom, Buddy just kind of chills out until the next appearance. So what's behind the closed stage in Bonnie Bowl? Well, a logo. That's cool. Solid wood flooring. Some quality oak. But that's about it. I cannot express how badly I want to play mini golf in here. This place is beautiful. This is one of my favorite parts of the game and again you just kind of run through it. No mini golf mini game or whatever. And it's suspended above the arena where you fight the croc himself. All in all I think this place is definitely my favorite in the entire game. So I looked at both animatronic death cutscenes with a bit more clarity, and I think by far Monty's is the most interesting. First, you have half Tipos and Gregory. That is definitely a highlight. And also, as you'll see when I show to a different perspective, Monty teleports all over the place during this death scene. First, shortly after the bucket falls on him, he teleports for the first time, and in the cutscene, the camera angle changes. Now, he's a lot further to the right, and the balls go with him. Then, as he falls, he gets teleported to where he hits his body on the railing. Just over there. It's here where you can see his body split into two pieces. Even though he wasn't even close to there just a moment ago. He then disappears one more time and reappears on the ground of the stage, again in a different position. And while his body properly lands and shows the animation, his legs are a little bit behind on the whole falling thing. They just kind of stay suspended in the air a lot longer than Monty's body, but eventually come crashing down as well. As for the Roxy death cutscene, there aren't actually that many tricks in it. Gregory does drive a cart at Roxy and launches at <laughs> and launches it at her in the exact position where she was standing in the cutscene. I like how Gregory just has like a crushed leg. <laughs> this, his leg is like jammed up his body. There's definitely a fair amount of weirdness when it comes to Gregory getting out of the cart, but in terms of it flying at Roxy or hitting her, it's pretty dang smooth. But yeah, here's the cart being sent at Roxy. Images taken moments before disaster. It works exactly how you might think it does. I'm sorry to disappoint, but when you try to enter Freddy, Gregory just disappears and the game takes the camera into Freddy before just closing up the casing and having you look through Freddy's eyes. I looked around in Trashland for quite a while and I couldn't find anything particularly noteworthy that I wanted to show off. I went out of bounds and you could kind of get underneath the trash which was kind of cool, but it really all is just a massive pile of garbage. And while it is really cool to look around and see everything, there isn't too much that you need an out of bounds camera to see. Now inside of Afton's lair, check out this massive 
Freddy head. Left to rot. The elevator shaft down to Afton's lair is a real elevator shaft. It does bring you down into the depths. And here's a view of where that thing's taking you. Here's a view inside the cave inside of Afton's lair. It's pretty dark down there and it's tough to get a good view. I hope everybody has a great Christmas. Moving forward, I'm going to make a bit more complex of videos, so they'll take more than one night most likely. And I'll also be doing a lot of challenge runs and speedruns with this game on Twitch. I'm looking forward to seeing everything that we can do with this game, and I will see you in the next video.